rock bottom. That is where he is, literally, in a pitch black basement with the rest of the building collapsed above them. Then, because of all people in the world to be trapped here with, he was stuck with his brother. The end of the world, or at least their little corner of Florida. They didn't have news of any other places. Anyway, it feels like the apocalypse had struck and he is stuck with the least helpful per person to be stuck with. Normally, he would have thought his brother might be able to help him think their way out of that. They are both very creative in their own way. Together, combining their specific interests and angles, they seem pretty much all the angles. They might figure something out. Dreamus is just sitting there in a corner, reminiscing on the awful things that possibly happened to their loved ones. First, their family. They've been at a family reunion when the world started falling apart. It still wasn't clear to them what had happened. They just knew that buildings were shaking and the streets were flooding and they were scrambling to keep their family alive. They got separated and reunited and about a day ago they gathered their bearings enough to settle somewhere, relatively safe and start worrying about other people. Like their friends who they'd planned to meet for a movie the night the world as they knew it seemed to end. After the family lunch. They'd gone out to search for them as well as supplies, hoping that their friends had all made it through without trouble and it would all be alright. Woman's right eye was bandaged, but he was hopeful it would heal. All in all, he and Remus had been the least injured of everyone who was young and healthy enough to go out scouting, making them the best choice to go out and look for allies and stuff. At least, that's the story the Thespian had spun when volunteering himself and Remus for the job. He'd assumed his brother wanted to go out there and find their friends as well, and maybe live through one of his weird fantasies. In all honesty, woman isn't made for the apocalypse. For a lot of reasons. Remus is, or so the older twin had thought. Until just now. At first, woman figured that Remus might be spiraling or something, and tried welcoming him to some breathing exercises. Remus pushed him away. Quite rudely, may he add? And started rambling about suffocating here. Woman had given up and had started to think out loud himself, trying to drown out the horror scenarios his brother was coming up with for their friends now that Woman had finally gotten him to shut up about what might have happened to their families during that last earthquake that landed them in their current situation. Remus's only contribution were very negative feedback. Can you stop it? If you are not going to help me, then shut your mouth and let me think. Fi Roman finally snaps. Shaking of the mental image of the, one of their friends. Nope, he can't think about that. You ask me to come, Remus pointed out. Yes, and I sincerely regret doing so, Roman huffs. Probably wish it was one of the others down here with you, his brother muses. Actually, yes, any of them would be more helpful, Roman agrees, his mind immediately going through the list of their friends. Logan would probably have figured out how to dig her way out of here safely by now. Probably would have made a whole drawing in the dirt on the ground. Poor man is probably very upset. I can't imagine his prim and proper disposition made it through all of that, Roman chuckles, imagining Logan trying to pretend his hair is, was still in model and his clothes aren't damaged or dirty, potentially adjusting a necktie that is barely holding on. Janice and Pat would be encouraging me at the very least. Jay wouldn't even bring up the others being in trouble unless he thought it would motivate me. And Virgil... Virgil would be prepared! Roman exclaims as he pats down the pockets of his favorite jacket. I still have them! He exclaims. God, I'm an idiot! He laughs. Oh, emo nightmare, I could just kiss you! Why is that? Remus wonders. Some life returning to his stone. Virgil's first gift to me was a Swiss army knife and a distress whistle. Basic survival stuff. I always have it with me as a reminder that no matter what he claims, deep down, he cares about me. Woman smiles at the memory as he holds up the gifts in question. Then he brings the whistle to his lips and gives a series of blows. And that is... A coat he uses when he has a hard time speaking, if you must know. When he does it, it's a set of steps, but he might recognize it, Woman insists. If they are close, we will know it's me. If they aren't... Someone must hear, he says hopefully. True or concrete, too? Remus asks skeptically. 
What is it with him? If you'd been contributing to our escape at all, you might have noticed the draft the way I did. So sorry to break it to you, we are not suffocating down here, and the sound will reach the outside. He has to believe that. You really wish you could trade me for one of them, huh? Remus concludes. If you aren't going to be helpful? Absolutely, Roman grumbles. Yeah, things would be better if it were me lying in a ditch somewhere. Roman freezes. What? Probably freezing. And animals coming to sniff at me to see if they can eat me yet? Whoa, hold on. What? Roman exclaims, turning in the direction of his brother's voice. He fumbles through his pockets and does something Logan and Virgil would scold him for, if they were here right now. He turns on the flashlight of his cell phone. He finds Remus, blinking against the sudden light and curled up in a corner. That doesn't make sense. Roman approaches his brother and kneels down. What nonsense are you on about now? He wonders. His brother often says ridiculous things, but he can't mean. Remus lets out a cackle, but it lacks his usual joy or chaos. The way he'd laugh when he got a funny reaction out of someone. No need to pretend anymore, Boro. It's just us at the end of the world. You don't have to hide it. I know you hate me. He smiles sadly. Woman just sits there for a good minute, completely dumbfounded. Remus, do you really believe that? He finally asks. Remus coughs. It's obvious, isn't it? I constantly get you in trouble, and I never listen, and I got a stick in this basement, and I sabotage your potential dates, and... Okay, that's enough, Roman snaps when he realizes his brother, brother is dangerously close to hyperventilating. Luckily, Remus's breathing evens out nearly instantly as his rent is brought to a sudden stop. That is the most ridiculous load of bull I ever heard coming from your mouth. And I've heard you say some preposterous things, he states firmly. Remus blinks in surprise. Sure, we argue more often than not, and there are days I feel like I could toss you out a window with little remorse. But you are my brother. I love you, Remus. I wanted you here with me because I knew, or I thought at least, that we can make it through anything together. I still believe that. How about you? Want to kick the ap apocalypse's butt with me? He grins. Remus eyes him skeptically. Oh boy, they were really about to have this heart to heart home. Roman rises to his feet and gives the signal again, hoping someone will hear and start on getting them out. Then he sits down next to Remus. Do you wish I was in a ditch somewhere? He asks. No, of course not, Remus protests, flabbergasted. But I hog all the attention, and I hardly ever want to partake in your creative process. And remember those times I snatched the boys we were interested in? Oh, and how about you and V had that falling out and I did not help just because I was salty about some stupid prank you pulled? That last, that last one is still a source of tension. Oh, yeah, but... And still you'll kick the behinds of anyone who dares cross me. And I will throw hands with anyone who hurts you as well. That's what it means to be siblings. You know all the ways to hurt one another. But you stick together no matter what. Roman states. I love you, Remus. Even when I don't like you, I love you. Roman promises, turning off his flashlight and his cell to save some battery. I'll try again. Oh! Roman tried to get up, but halfway his movement, he's pulled into a crushing hug by sobbing Remus. Rem, you good there, buddy? Roman asks with a chuckle. I love you too. I promise. I'm crap at showing it, but... Hey, I know, okay? It's all good, Roman assures his brother. Now, how about we get out of here, Roman suggested. Remus let go and laugh. Yeah, let's make some noise, Roman grins. With Remus on the case... He's sure they will come up with a way to be as loud as humanly possible. They will be fine. They will find their friends. And whenever they get to the other side of this disaster, whatever it was, they'll be stronger for it. As people and as brothers. <laughs>